All right, let's do something a little bit different today. Let's look at some malware. This will be for the Intro to Malware Reverse Engineering course, and the textbook that we will be working out of is by Michael Sikorsky and Andrew Honig, titled Practical Malware Analysis, the Hands-On Guide to Dissecting Malicious Software. That was published by the No Starch Press in 2012. The environment that we will be working in today is a Windows XP virtual machine. We're using a virtual machine for two reasons. The first reason is that a virtual machine keeps us safe. Any malware that uh, gets accidentally run will not have a chance to infect or affect the machine that we are working on. And the second reason is that the malware samples and the software we're using to an analyze them are a little bit old and they run best in Windows XP. The lab that we are doing today is out of chapter one. There are a total of four labs, but we will only be doing the first one. They are all relatively similar, so similar processes, and you can do the others on your own. Lab 1-1 begins with uploading the files to virustotal.com, and we run into our issue there. See, if I open Windows Explorer and go to virustotal.com, the page cannot be displayed. That is because Internet Explorer is old and not supported. We have a new, with finger quotes, browser called Chameleon. It is one of the only browsers that is still compatible with Windows XP. However, if we go to virus total on that, it is not able to render the page. So the uploading to virus total will have to take place on your personal machine if you can do so. Let's uh, move on to question two. When were these files compiled? So let's go into PE view. Let's see if we can see that. The files that we are analyzing are lab01-01.exe and .dll respectively. We can go into our image headers and the file header will tell you the time date stamp when this was created. It's in uh, year month date format as all things should be and so it was december 19th 2010 at 4 16 pm universal standard time let's take a look at the dll going into the same header and it is 4 16 pm on december 19th 2010 at 4, 16, and 38 seconds, so almost the exact same time. These are probably related, if we couldn't tell by the fact that they are named the exact same thing. So moving on to question three, are there any indications that either of these files is packed or obfuscated? If so, what are these indicators? We are already in PE view, so let's keep the party going, and we can see that we have a Text, our data, data, and relock sections. Likewise, let's go back into the exe, and we can see a text, our data, and data section. So these are more than likely not packed or obfuscated. They uh, have these sections exposed, but just for the sake of completeness, I think we can go to PEID and open these same samples. Start with the exe. Our first indicator is that this was compiled by Microsoft Visual C++ 6.0. So it's not likely to be packed, but let's double check. And the three tests that we can run in extra information here say not packed. So let's move on to the DLL. Once again, C++ 6.0, and one, two, three indicators say not packed. So we can fairly confidently say that this is not packed or obfuscated. Moving on to question four. Do any imports hint at what this malware does? If so, which imports are they? For the imports, we can go into the dependency walker. Let's open up the exe first. And looking at the DLLs that it calls, we have the kernel32.dll, 
and we can go into look at, looking at the imports. We have copy file, create file. So we are working with files. We're going to be uh, either looking, opening, creating files. And then we have the msvcrt.dll. That's the uh, Microsoft Visual C++ Runtime, msvcrt. And we just have some fairly generic calls here. So nothing interesting there. Let's move on to the DLL. We can collapse all of these uh, recursive calls here and just look at the primary calls. We have again kernel32.dll and not a lot there. We have the VC runtime, about the same. We have STRC, strncmp, and I believe that deals with uh, internet addresses but it's a uh, string comparer, I believe. And moving into the meat of it, we have this WS232. Now that is the WinSock2 DLL, and that deals with internet connections. So we know that we are leaving the machine and going over the internet for things. What things are they? Well, we can't really tell because these aren't being called by name. They are being called by ordinal. Suspicious. But we can go and using the ordinal number, we can refer to the exports here and see what we are looking at. So we know that three goes to three and close socket, four goes to four and that's connect. So we are opening and closing sockets. Now we could go through and scroll and find the number, but a good shortcut is just highlight the one that you're looking at, right click, we go to highlight matching export function. So we are looking at HTONS. I'm not sure what that does, but we can find out with a Google search. We have INET address, so internet address. Receive, send, so we are sending and receiving data over the internet. Shut down, socket, and WSA startup and WSA cleanup. So we are sending data over the internet. We know that uh, probably contacting a command and control server or at, at the very least, downloading a file that is hosted somewhere else. Next question asks us, are there any other files or host-based indicators that you could look for on infected systems? One thing that we can do to find that out is look at the strings on the files. So let's go find them. All right, and we are in the folder with the chapter one labs. And we have our labo1-01.dll and exe. Those are the ones that we want to find the strings for. And we can just use the sysinternals program strings. Strings. Let's look at the DLL first. So we have basic stuff here up top, a little bit of gibberish. Strings are going to just be any kind of string that it can find. Close handle sleep, so we're looking at our uh, functions that we're calling here. Hello, we have a hello. That is probably an initialization string when we are contacting a host. We have an IP address, that looks very interesting. So 127.26.152.13. And then this interesting string right here, S-A-D-F-U-H-U-H-F. Now that is not anything interesting per se, but a anything ASDF, that's uh, any permutation of that is generally just a, it's definitely a human made string because that is on the home row of the QWERTY keyboard. So if you're just kind of mashing the keyboard for a, say a variable or a file name or anything like that, that's not going to refer to what it does, you're going to end up with SADF and some kind of gibberish like that, but it's it's patterned gibberish. So we are probably going to be looking at a registry key or a file name or anything like that. 
or maybe it's a password for this uh, the server here. We don't know just yet. Let's look at the strings for the exe. Right off the bat, this one right here, warning, this will destroy your machine. I think we can ignore that because it's just the, uh, maybe a safety message because this is a practice malware. But looking through the, let's scroll up, scroll up, scroll up. A bunch of gibberish. And we come down to some function names, copy file, memory allocation. These are all of the uh, DLL calls. So we have a kernel32 and a kerny132.dll. This is interesting, especially in older malware. malware what you're going to see are file names that are designed to look like a Windows process, like the kernel32.dll, but this is a number, kerny132. We see it again down here. So this is kerny132.dll in the Windows System32 directory. Uh, kernel32. Dot, that's probably a wildcard search, so we're looking for anything that starts with kernel32. And of course we have the lab. 01-01.dll. So this uh, this kerny 132.dll is going to be the host-based indicator. And the next question is what network-based indicators? Well, we can go back up to the last strings from the DLL. And we can see this 127.26. So if we see internet traffic outbound to this IP address, that is going to be our network-based indicator. Now, what would you guess is the purpose of these files? Well, we can guess based on the fact that we are looking at uh, looking for file names and we have this IP address. And I, I'm more, and now that I think about it, I am more and more convinced that this is a password to like an FTP site or something. But going back down, yeah, this uh, with the kerny132.dll, I think we are downloading this. And this is our payload that has the malicious component in it. So this is a, uh, this is a file downloader. And that is uh, what we're looking at. Now, I know I said that we are doing lab 1-1, but I do want to touch on lab 1-3 really quickly. And uh, we're uh, going back to that question that asked if there are any indications that the file is packed or obfuscated. Let's open that 1-3. And now we see that we don't have any named sections. Our, uh, our data, our text, whatever the sections were that we had in the other one, we're not finding them here. That is an indication that it is packed or obfuscated. And we can go into PE, no, we're in PE view. Let's go to PE ID. We are going to find that sample. 1-3, and now we see the signature is FSG 1.0. We go into our extra information here, and two out of three say that we have a packed executable. So to do any further analysis on this, we are going to have to unpack it, but I don't believe that's in the scope of this chapter. So that is, that is what a packed executable would look like. And that is the lab section for chapter one. Again, I'm just doing the first section. There are three other sections that are very much the same. So you can go ahead and do those on your own. And if you want to check your work, the answers are in the back of the book.